<laughs> it's front wheel drive. Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today I'm here with my friend Cody Walker. And we're gonna do today's episode a little different than what we traditionally do. We are definitely gonna get into his car because he's done some cool mods to it. But as you guys know, we're more of a muscle car, pro touring kind of channel. You know, before we dig into the car, your life dramatically changed over this last, <clears throat> what seven, are we, almost seven, eight years now. Seven plus years, yeah. Yeah, I mean, number one, people look at you and they see Paul. I, yeah, you know. Yeah, I know. I, I, but but at the same time, yeah. I mean, he was the huge influence on me. Yeah. Like, which is for, for a lot of people that I meet, yeah. they're like, "Um, oh, your brother's the reason I'm into cars," and I'm like, "Well, shit, me too." Yeah. Because I was fi I'm 15 years younger, so like growing yeah. up, like every kid, like I had my Legos and I had my Hot Wheels. Yeah. And like I love playing with those. Yeah. And uh, by the time I came around, Dad was. Dad didn't have any like fun cars anymore. Right. He had like trucks, he had a sewer contracting business. Right. So he always right. had like, like you know, dom old domestic trucks around, right. which were cool. We had like an international scout. Okay. I think that's really that's cool. was, was the beginning of like, hey, I like this a lot. Yeah. And then um, like a lot of like guys growing up here in the US, you know, you're, you're accustomed to the domestic brands and all of that. And so Paul certainly like he went through that phase. Yeah. And then yeah. he landed fast and furious and got indoctrinated with the whole tuner JDM scene. Big time. And it opened his eyes into a whole nother world. And then being the younger brother, going on to set, seeing all of that and seeing how Paul's interest kind of switched over to that. Yeah. And like, I just, I like them all, but yeah, yeah I, I like, I'm a big fan of JDM. Yeah, no, I right? know you are, so dude. Like, I know, I know. It's been a big passion point. For yeah. You. So the other thing I thought would be fun to introduce into this is, because a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people watching you know, who you are, they, they, you know, but they might not know the, the big picture. So you were living in Oregon, right? I was working as a, I was an EMT and then I went to school full time while I was doing that. And I um, got my paramedic license and I was working as a paramedic. I just transitioned yeah. into being yeah, the yeah. paramedic on the ambulance. And we were doing that. My wife is a civil engineer, <laughs> way smarter than me. Uh, Paul had reach out worldwide, right. which was perfect because I wanted to go and go on the missions and stuff as a paramedic with yeah. the medical personnel and, and be involved in that capacity. And then, you know, what happened happened. And uh, yeah. first off, I was super homesick because yeah. all my, my family's here in Southern California. Yeah, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I was kicking myself in the ass because we were really close. And like, I traveled with them all the time growing up through, through high school, through college. Oh. And then I was kind of like, you know, my own life going on up there. Sure. And I felt like I had been robbed of the last three years yeah. that he was around. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I had a full-time job. I was going to school full-time up there. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it was a, it sucked for everybody. And um, yeah, so I got, I kind of, I came back in because Roe was kind was, Paul was the heart and soul of Reach Out Worldwide. And uh, you know, it was, he was funding everything. It was coming out of his pocket. And right. he had friends that were, Go, that were firefighters and paramedics and stuff going on the missions, but there was no like real infrastructure. I got involved uh, and jumped in and got some awesome people helping me along the way. Going from the like the quiet kind of sleepy so-called normal life that you were living up there. Yeah. Now you're thrust into this world by by choosing to step in, take over running, reach out worldwide. But in the midst of that, all of a sudden, you're this famous guy now. You know what I mean, like people. Yeah, it's, people, yeah, yeah, but between but yes. you and me, it, obviously not. But you know, what right, I mean. right, yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah, but you've but I've said it to you before is that I think you've worn it well, and rather than rather than making it about you and look at me and how cool I am and start like and and stepping away from who you've been, you're still the same guy. You've just you've just transitioned to what you've done, and you've and you're. In my opinion, you know, I've said it to you before, dude, is you're carrying forth a legacy that your brother kind of set up and you stepped in. And, and the truth is you're doing stuff that he didn't do with Reach Out Worldwide, you know? Yeah, I appreciate that. And it's been, it's fun to watch. You took that as an opportunity to go, all right, so people still want to honor my brother 
people want to come together around cars. I'm going to do something with this. Mm -hmm. And so now you've created Fuel Fest. Yeah. You know, and the whole idea too with that was let's make something that will benefit Roe forever after. Roe yep. is always the benefit charity at all Fuel Fest shows mm -hmm. and just make something cool that people just want to come to. Totally. Like whether whether they were a big fan of Paul or not, like the whole idea of the show is it's like everything, like supercars, muscle cars, JDM, drifting, drag racing, burnout yep. box, uh, live music, you know, the whole thing. It's big family friendly event. Just come out and celebrate car culture with us. So June 19th, right? June 19th, it's Saturday. It's Father's Day weekend. Yep. States reopening June 15th. Yep. This is an outdoor event, so we don't have all these crazy regulations. Yep. And it's it's, it's at Irwindale Speedway. It's gonna be crazy. You've got Hoonigans doing Hoonig a whole setup out there, Hoonig right? Yeah, Hoonigans is coming out to play. Which is absurd. Uh, we've got Baja Designs coming out with a Pro 2X truck on 40s. It's gonna be ripping it up oh in the God. drift box. We've got the VIP area. I mean, I, I, yeah. I you know, I'll, I have, a, ton of great friends in the automotive industry that are coming yeah. out so yeah. you don't know who you're gonna see yeah but it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time I'm, no it's gonna be amazing dude I'm, I mean I, I already talked to Randall and I said so you guys are gonna need me to bring the muscle cars that was just simply my excuse to get a booth set up out there so so I'm stoked to have an Autotopia LA booth with and I've already got a bunch of really sick cars dude, I'm lined so up for stoked it. all right cool so speaking of cars let's dig into this which obviously you guys very different from what we do and the only reason when Randall called me and said, hey, do you guys want to shoot with Cody? I was like, yes, yeah, definitely. He's like, cool, I'll have him bring out his Type R. And I was like, okay, it's Cody, yes, yeah. yes. Well, <laughs> so, so now you got to sell me on this. Yeah, so, uh, and here in North America, this this is, the this is based on the 10th generation Civic. Okay. This was the first Civic Type R that we've ever had access to in North America. Okay. But it's a, as you'd expect a Honda, it's a two liter four cylinder. Yeah. But yeah. Honda's gone turbos now and okay. that's what's under here. And what does it make power wise stock? Stock, uh, Honda, Honda states 305 horsepower and 295 pound feet. And manual trans? Manual only, six speed only. Nice, yeah. I like that. I mean, it's an enthusiast car. It's not a huge production car. They're not cranking out tons and tons of these. Right. And they also, a uh, big thing with the suspension, they retune the suspension and they put an entire, because this has adaptive suspension. Oh, it does. They okay. put an entire different, a new unit in it. So it actually responds 10 times faster than the previous years, 17, okay. 18s and 19s. Okay. And then they also did, you know, they did do cosmetic work. Uh, they also uh, made the car a little bit lighter. I didn't hear that there were a lot of complaints with the old brakes, but apparently some people were having issues. They, each corner is like two and a half pounds lighter. Uh, and it's a floating caliper. Okay, I yeah. think I think that's what they call sure. I used to know this way better a year ago yeah, when yeah. I bought the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, and they, they're no longer slotted either. It actually breaks better and it's also lighter. So you got less unsprung that's a weight. Lot. It, which that is a helps. lot at each corner. When you're performance driving, you knock off a couple pounds at the corner. For sure, it, it, for sure. It's impactful. And the wheels that come on these things, they, yeah. they look cool, but they're heavy. Yeah. They're real heavy. So doing of that, course. you know, I, I shaved off several pounds on each corner and then I added power. Yeah, yeah. So it's What got have more you pep. done to add power? So uh, I've got a cat back exhaust system. It's an active exhaust. Mm -hmm. That's more for the sound. Okay. Um, and then uh, AEM cold air intake. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got, it's been uh, tuned with a Honda Flash Pro. So it's making more power now. Intercooler from PRL down there. Based on the tune that I'm running with the pretty standard modifications I've done to the car, mm -hmm. I should be at about 365. At the tires? At the tires. That's great. To the front wheels. And what does the car weigh? Uh, about, I believe it's 3150. How yeah. about the um, like the splitter? And I noticed on the back the carbon. Is that stock to this car? It's OE. Um, uh -huh. It's not real. Oh, okay. Yeah, Honda's got to stick to a price point. It's like a laminate. Uh -huh. to make it it's, look good. It, yeah, it's a laminate. So for this year, 21, they made a limited edition uh, Type R that uh, we actually I teamed up with uh, Right Right Honda out in uh, Arizona. Is that they, the one that you guys sold at Bear Jackson yes. for 165? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. MSRP on the limited is I think 48,000. What I worked out with them was they had a limited edition Type R 
They reached out and said, we want to donate 100% of the proceeds to Roe over sticker. That's all we want. Well, I'm curious at this point. So I think what we do is we get the cameras in the car. We can talk more when we drive, but let's go, let's go drive this thing a little bit. I, for one, I got to tell you, I couldn't tell you the last time I was in a front wheel drive car or a Honda. Yeah. Well, let's go for a drive. Yeah. Cool. We're going to go for a drive, let's you guys. Put it into sport mode. Yeah, let's so put it in it'll sport tighten mode. up the suspension, and it's gonna obviously it's gonna remap your throttle for some, uh, response. Oh, it sounds good too. Makes all the tuner sounds. Do we get the? Oh yeah, I hear the blow off. Mm -hmm. Super high revving too, huh? Your yeah, 7K? for a for a turbo car. Yeah. I think it's just I think it's 7,200 RPM, which is pretty high for a turbo four. Yeah. It really takes off in third gear. Does it? it really I just can't get over the interior, how nice this is. Like it's a performance driven car. Real, really responsive steering, it's quick. I love that sound, I gotta admit. The blow off is, I love the blow off sound. And I like the short, the short throw. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that stock on this car or did you do that? It, it actually, to be honest with you, it, the, the, the shifter that comes in it is fine. It's totally good. Yeah. And it is, they, they call it a short throw shifter, comes stock. This is actually from a company called Acuity Instruments. They sent this out to me and um, I've, I've just recently got it in and <laughs> I didn't know what I was missing type of thing. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't complaining about the stock shifter, yeah. but I'm so glad I have this one. It's more snickety and it's more of a deliberate throw. You yeah. know, you're not like, oh, is this maybe where I, no. Like, no, it's going I'm right deliberate. where it's supposed to yeah. be, for sure. You've got more confidence jerking it around. And it picks up, I mean, the thing, like, dude, it's not, it's not a dull car in the slightest. I mean, I've driven Hondas, like, like the old school Accords and stuff like that, and it, you know, it is what it is. Right. It's a, it's an economy car. I mean, this, you can already right. tell this is a performance driven car. You drive so many high horsepower cars, like there, this doesn't feel fast to you, um, but it's around town, it's usable yeah. power. Oh, I already hit the rev limiter, cool. It comes up fast. It does, man. All these cars get a number plate inside. Oh yeah. Dude, look at how for two, look at that. Those look at those last two digits, bro. You gotta be kidding me. That's what I said. You gotta be kidding me. That's what me, I dude. said. I go, I go, no way. So Cody's brother, his racing number was always number 47. That's why always. you even have it. I see it on your hat. Yep. That's I can't right, believe dude. that this ends in 47, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's no way, I mean, would Honda have done? No, dude, they have it, no it just, idea. That was never mentioned. That, I go, right? I get, I'm gonna get what I get. I don't get a pick on that, a choice on that. And it's not like it's just buried in there. It's the last two numbers. I love that the last two numbers are a four seven. No, it That's gave me crazy. goose, it gave me goosebumps when I picked the car up. <laughs> <laughs> it's front wheel drive. Yeah. <laughs> this was definitely a fun one to have Cody on. Yeah, not my kind of car, but to tell you the truth, it's a pretty damn cool car. Listen up here. If you're planning on going to Fuel Fest June 19th, make sure when you go to purchase your tickets, put in a discount code of ATLA. That's gonna get you one free ticket, so you and your passenger half price. And it's gonna be a killer event. There's gonna be drifting. Hoonigans are gonna be out there. This thing's gonna be a blast, plus live music, all kinds of cars. Definitely gonna be fun. And of course, you know, me and the guys will be out there hanging out. So, as always, a big thanks for hanging and watching what we do, and we'll see you in the next one, you guys. All right, man, later. <laughs>